Hello and welcome back to another episode of Namaste Google Cloud. My name is Piyush Sachdeva and in today's video I'm going to share five amazing tips and one secret weapon that could make a huge difference in your Associate Cloud Engineer certification exam. If you haven't watched the complete playlist Namaste Google Cloud yet, I would highly recommend going back and complete that first. Trust me, you will get most benefit from this video if you have the solid understanding of the basics. Once you have done that, make sure you watch this entire video as you won't want to miss these powerful tips and tricks. If you are new here, consider subscribing the channel and give it a thumbs up. It would make a huge difference. Let's dive in and get started. All right. So the first trick would be devil is in the detail. What I mean by that is read the question very carefully and note down all the keywords and the requirements that is given in the question and your solution will be based on those requirements given. So let's have a look at that with the help of an example. Suppose you have a single binary application that you want to run on Google Cloud. You decided to automatically scale the application. The first keyword for you would be automatically scale. That means it should support auto scaling based on the underlying infrastructure CPU usage based on the CPU usage matrix. Your organization policies require you to use virtual machines directly. That means that is your third requirement. Let's have a look at each of the options and we can eliminate the ones that doesn't satisfy these requirements. So the first one says create a GKE cluster and use horizontal pod auto scaling to scale the application. It says you have to use virtual machines directly. So GKE would not be an ideal choice to use over here. It will be an overkill. Second one is create an instance template and use the template in a managed instance group with auto scaling configured. This option looks more promising because it does says about using the virtual machines behind an instance template and you can configure the auto scaling based on that. It doesn't say that auto scaling will be done based on the CPU usage, but let's have a look at other options as well. So the third one says create an instance template and use the template in the manage instance group that scales up and down based on the time of the day. So that's a schedule based auto scaling, which is not the requirement here. So three cannot be the ideal choice. So the fourth option suggests to use a third party tool to build automation around scaling application up and down. It does say about CPU usage monitoring. So let me try to explain this in a better way with a second tip. Second tip would be go cloud native. That means you have to use, that means you would be using GCP native services wherever possible. You know, uh, your answer should, uh, so you shouldn't be recommending to use a third party or open source tool unless the GCP service provided to you doesn't satisfy the need. However, over here instance template with the auto scaling configured second option is an ideal choice. So we'll go with that. So tip number one, devil is in the detail, read all the keywords and read all the requirements very carefully. Second one is use cloud native services wherever possible. Now let's have a look at our tip number three, which is principle of least privilege access. Principle of least privilege access states that you should be assigning only the required permissions and roles that is needed to perform certain duties. Let's have a look at that with the help of an example. You need to provide your VM access to write data in your cloud storage bucket, which IAM role you should attach to the service account. Now the options that we have is storage object creator, storage object admin, storage admin. Here your requirement is to assign this service account access to write data in your storage bucket. So that means you shouldn't have the object admin access. You shouldn't have the storage admin access. Only the object creator access should be sufficient. However, the other two roles, object admin and storage admin roles will also have this object creator role but it would be an overkill. We wouldn't want to provide the roles and the permissions to a user or a service account that is not needed by them. So while answering any IAM type question, make sure we keep that in mind that we should always use principle of least privilege. Now let's head over to tip number four, which says odd one out. So if you don't know the answer, 
I'll try to eliminate the answer that you don't see fit with the question. So let's say you want to verify the IAM users and roles assigned within a GCP project named my project. What should you do? Now it is showing you different steps and different G cloud commands. And based on that, you need to provide the answer. But suppose you don't know uh, the correct G cloud command. So you try to eliminate the ones that you think would not satisfy the requirement. The first one say run G cloud I am role list. So if you look at the requirements carefully, it says you want to verify I am users and roles. But the first one would only list the roles. So that cannot be a ideal choice. Second one says run G cloud I am service account list. So it will only list the service account, which is neither of our requirements. The third one says navigate to the project and then to the IAM section, review the members and roles. So this one is what we need. We need to view the members, which is IAM users and roles assigned to a project. So third one would be the answer in this case. Now let's look at the fifth one, which is while answering your question, Make sure your solution is cost effective and a Google recommended best practice. Suppose you want to select and configure a cost effective solution for relational data on GCP. You are working with a small set of operational data in one geographical location. So you need a cost effective solution for a relational data, small set of data and in single location. You need to support point in time recovery as well. What should you do? So now we have two services that supports relational data in GCP. One is Cloud SQL, another one is Cloud Spanner. Both of those will satisfy the requirement. However, the cost effective solution is a requirement over here. Plus there is only a small set of data. So using Cloud Spanner in this case would be an overkill. So Cloud SQL with binary logging option enabled would satisfy your requirement. Now that we have seen all the five tips and tricks that I wanted to show, it's time for our secret weapon. So there are different patterns that we could analyze and based on that, it will be easier for us to answer the question. For example, whenever the question says analyzing billing data or run SQL queries on huge data. So the answer 99% of the time would be BigQuery. If it says high bandwidth dedicated network between on-prem and GCP that supports low latency, then answer would be direct interconnect. If uh, the keyword says production ready server, isolated environment that can be provisioned with fewer possible steps, then the answer is cloud marketplace. If it says infrastructure as a code for GCP, and you should have the ability to launch your infrastructure using reusable templates, then answer should be deployment manager. So again, if the options given are deployment manager and Terraform, then you should always go with the cloud native solution, which is deployment manager in case of GCP. The next one is if it says equal DB support, auto scaling and available globally, then it should be Cloud Spanner because Cloud SQL is for single region only. It doesn't support the global location and it doesn't support auto scaling as well. If it says small data, cost effective solution, single location, SQL DB, then Cloud SQL is the answer. If uh, you should have the ability to split traffic between multiple application versions, then there are two services in GCP that supports this kind of use. So cloud run and app engine based on the other requirement that's been given to you. You should select either of these options. It says non-persistent highest performance disk then local SSD would be an ideal choice. If you need to provide the cost estimation of certain services or a certain use case, then you should always use the pricing calculator. If uh, there is a requirement to sync Google Workspace user with on-premises Active Directory. Then there is a service which says 
Google Cloud Directory Sync, this is what you should be using. First step to use any GCP service for the first time when you provision a GCP account and you log into the first time and try to provision any service for the first time, then the first step should always be to enable the API. The largest CIDR range for a custom VPC is 10.0.0 slash 8. I hope these tips and tricks and these patterns that I have provided to you will be helpful. So that's it for this video folks. Uh, I hope this video was somewhat beneficial to you and you have learned something out of it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and families, colleagues uh, and those who are uh, preparing for associate cloud engineer certification or if they are beginner to GCP service. And uh, I will see you soon with the next video. Good luck with your exam and let me know in the comment section below if you need any help with the, any of the things that we have discussed so far. Thank you very much for watching. You have a good day.